The podcast you're about to hear involves true stories, which may contain graphic content that is not suitable for children. Listener's discretion is advised. This is Esoteric Oddities. Hello. Hey, fellow podcast listeners. I didn't say guys this time because I'm <laughs> over that. This is a new That's year. That's in 2017. I'm saying. <laughs> so if you're listening to this, you made it to 2017. Yes, guys. This is Esoteric Oddities Podcast. Still is. Always will be. 2018 version. And nothing's changed except my underwear. Can't say the same for Sarah. Yeah, guys. Um, I'm trying this new thing where I'm selling dirty underwear. So here we are. Uh, you can hit us up at oddityspodcast at gmail.com. Totally just kidding. But what I'm not kidding about is the fact that Dolly Parton liked my tweet. I said to him, I said, oh my God, I hope she stalks your twit. I hope she stalks my twit too. <laughs> like what the hell? Guys, this is not a joke. At the end of the year, Spotify was sending out, I'm sure you've seen it if you're on the Twitter, but Spotify was sending out to the artists, like how many countries listen to them. Have you, you saw them, right? Mm-hmm. And like how many accumulative hours people listen. And hers was like four million some. Yes, four mil. Yes. And I um, I tweeted her. I was like, honestly, one fourth of that is me. And about eight hours later, I get a notification on my phone. I was sitting upstairs. I'll never forget it. It's like it was yesterday. Like in your living room? It was yesterday. Yeah, I was sitting upstairs in my living room, minding my own business before my life was about to change. I had no idea. I heard the ping on my phone and I look... Dolly Parton liked your tweet. Dolly Parton liked my tweet. I How do you feel? Literally, like, it sounds so annoying, but I started crying out of one of my eyes. Just the one, though. Just my right eye started. And Jason was like, you're ridiculous. So I am going to print it out and get it on a shirt. Are so you really doing that? Cool. Yeah, are you kidding me? That's amazing. With that meme of her where she's, like, drunk and doing the, the pointing fingers. Yeah, you that's know the your one favorite I'm thing. About? Yeah, I love it so much. If you couldn't tell, I like Dolly Parton. Nope, didn't know. So Had no idea. Now, uh, I'm still playing song pop with Trisha Paytas. Kimmy Gibbler tweeted me, uh, it's just overall been a really good year. So 2017 was a whimsy. What did Kimmy Gibbler say? <laughs> um, I tweeted at her. I was like, wow, I found Kimmy Gibbler's Twitter. And she was just like, yeah. I'm sh-, or she said something about it being a great day. I screenshotted it. Put that on the shirt too. Yeah, I should. That one's not as important as Dolly Parton. No offense. Yikes. Um, however, I did... Um, you know, I haven't heard from Aaron Carter since I drunk FaceTimed him with my mom two years ago. I guess he's um busy beating Shaq and all that. So Stop. that's okay. But uh, <laughs> wow, what a way to enter 2018. Am I right, ladies? Am I right? Am I right? I didn't get that Shaq reference for like two seconds. You get it now though, right? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, I hope everyone else got it. If you didn't, HTTP. You're too young for me, bro. Colon slash slash Google.com. You're too young for me, bro. If the only (laughs) razor she owns is a scooter. You're too young for me. She's too young for you, bro. No. Um, I have a little story here that popped up on the news. Oh, tell me. So California man gets stuck in chimney during burglary attempt. I know Christmas is over, but ho, ho, holy shit. This was in Citrus Heights, California. So authorities say a Northern California man tried to burglarize a business by entering through the chimney only to become stuck. Police in the Sacramento area of Citrus Heights said Friday that 32-year-old Jesse B. Rube, B. Rube, B. Rube, uh, with a name like that, you're bound to be stuck at a chimney at some point in your life. Um, he was uninjured, but now faces one count of burglary. Can you imagine? One count, not even all the counts because he didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> so according to police, he slid down the chimney of the business Wednesday, then found himself lodged inside. The Rockland man was able to reach for his cell phone and dial 911 for help. Then the Sacramento Fire Department responded and had to use special equipment. Can you imagine what that was like? Like, you're like, oh, shit, man, I'm stuck here. I got to call the police. This How did you even get your phone out if you're stuck in the chimney? Imagine that. Yeah, I don't know. You got to like Siri, inch your way. If Siri's on, I guess that's one reason to keep her on. Okay, I just got the iPhone X and I have no idea how to use Siri. I just click a bunch. I just tap the screen. It like recognizes your face. That's scary to me. Yeah. And um, so the cool thing about it is um, hashtag not sponsored. But um, <laughs> if 
if a, you get a text and it says it'll say iMessage and then if you look at it the text opens so like if you were to look at my phone the text wouldn't open yeah i know i already tried it i know what i, I I'm, I'm explaining oh okay to our fans not our to you. fans not even our listeners they're just our fans oh shit um i'm explaining to our listeners not to you because you already know i already know but uh, yeah, maybe if he had Siri on his phone, that's that's how we could have caught it. Hey Siri, call nine one one. Stop! Someone, someone's phone who's listening to this just went off. No! Stop! Turn it off. No! No! Cancel! No! no. Cancel! Please! No! Oh my god! Okay. Okay, shit. We're dialing. 911. <laughs> I did not know that was gonna happen. Oh um, my god! Yay. Um. So chimneys, what are you gonna do? Not hey Siri. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what I was gonna say is, as a child, I had a strange fear. I had many strange fears. Yeah, it's, it we, seems to be. We a see that theme. in the twenty-one. No, what is it? Twenty-three weeks we've been recording. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. It'll be twenty-three in this episode. Oh, twenty-three. You're right. Look at that. Um. Yeah, so I had a fear of being stuck in a chimney at some point in my life. And as many times as they told us to stop, drop, and roll, I really thought that would play a part. But it hasn't yet. Thank God. Knock on wood. But being stuck in a chimney stop, terrifies me. Stop, drop, and roll, me. though? Yeah. You could do better than that. No, but they always teach you. They're like, yeah, uh, How stop, you stop, drop, dropping and rolling in a chimney? No, uh, this is a separate thing. I'm saying I was afraid because I always thought I was going to f- somehow catch on fire. Oh, uh, and there would be no way for you to stop, drop, and roll. Yeah, like the oh, lady who it. went up in flames in our last story. Yeah, RIP to her. Um, Did you ever see the movie The Gremlins? Yes, Um, people used to call me Gremlin in high school. Oh my okay. God, I forgot that you told me that. I was bullied. Same, bruh. I'm right there on that same <laughs> fucked up little boat with you. Um, we'll hang our freak flag high though. But yes, I love that. I'm hanging it right now. <laughs> what? She took off her brazier, you guys. I did. My bra's up in the air. I'm. <laughs> no, what is it? Um, from SpongeBob. <laughs> I don't know. Lee, 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 lee. Oh. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. I'm Doodle Bob, but picture a bra in my hand, not a pencil. So gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> the girl Kate, her dad got stuck in a chimney and died, and that terrified me. You don't remember that part? That was quick. <laughs> he's well. He's like, well, why do you hate Christmas? And she was like, well, my dad dressed up uh, as Santa one year and he went missing, and we thought he ran away, but then uh, we found him the next day when our the fire he, they like lit a fire and it wasn't going out the chimney, and it was because the dad dressed up like Santa and tried to come down the chimney. That is really sad, actually. Yeah. So I I don't like that. Also, I didn't have a chimney as like a child. I do now, but as a child, my mom told me he came in through the furnace. Yep, that little thing over there. He was fucking magic. Have you ever been called Johnny Boy? Yes. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called Johnny Bravo and uh, nasty. That stupid gay kid. Okay, no, you are not that <laughs> stupid gay kid. I'm that smart gay kid. No, you're my favorite. Oh, thanks. Not my favorite gay, my favorite person. Oh, thanks. Who's your favorite guy? You are. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's um, William. Celine Dion. William? Who's William? Shakespeare? Yeah. I knew it. JK. Um, Nobody spends that much time in a theater. <laughs> theater. <laughs> uh, okay, but... I think it's uh, it's only fair that we warn you now that this episode is not for everybody because... Yes, please. Uh, keep we, your squeamish stomachs. Is that the saying? Whatever. I don't think that's a saying at all, but we are talking about torture methods today. And it could be getting graphic, at least mine are. I had so much fun doing this. I've been raving to Jonathan about these things that I found, and I can't wait to share it with you guys because some of these things are bizarre. The yeah torture methods they're uh, they're bizarre. Let's start. Okay, I think you are up to bat. Yes. Um, a swing and a miss. All right, my turn. <laughs> wow. Um, hoopla. Remember that game? Hoopla. Yeah, it's the base the baseball game. It's like kids playing baseball. Little league. Yes, and he'd be like, hoopla hoopla. No. Oh, look it up. Anyway. In early 2000s, the CIA introduced a program used to create fear, disorient, and prolong capture shock. 
Music would be blasted to keep prisoners awake for a long period of time. This music would be played for weeks or months ongoing. So, like, literally, like, it would not stop. Was it loud? Yeah. Loud. I said that. Loud music. Oh, I'm sorry. Former Guantanamo prisoner Raul Ahmed stated, From the end of 2003, they introduced the music and it became even worse. Before that, you could try and focus on something else. It makes you feel like you are going mad. You lose the plot and it's very scary to think that you might go crazy because of all the music. Because of the loud noise and because after a while you don't hear the lyrics at all. All you hear is heavy banging. Oh. So I did you guys a favor and I listed the songs that they play that Their the cia playlist. plays to literally torture people the cia list and um this list is ranked from 17 to 1 so at the top of the list is drowning pool bodies metallica enter sandman neil diamond america sesame street theme song <laughs> <laughs> when you sent me that list i was dying. i was done i was like oh my god sesame street wait the list gets better <laughs> Matchbox 20, Cold, Prince, Raspberry, Beret, Queen, We Are the Champions, Decide, Fuck Your God, Marilyn Manson, The Beautiful People, The Meow Mix theme song. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. Imagine hearing that Wait, for literally a week straight. What's their slogan? The the only cat food cats ask by name. Meow, 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 Isn't meow. That what it is? Yes. I hate it. Um, the Bee Gees, Saturday Night Fever, Barney and Friends theme song. That's creepy to me. I'm saying um, David Gray, Babylon, uh, Mohammed El Kwasabaji is um, My Memories, Christina Aguilera, Dirty. <laughs> Like, what? You, they definitely had, like, a gay policeman who's like, hey, we're going to play my jam, y'all. Hand me that ox cord. <laughs> ox. Hand me that ox. <laughs> Except it was 2003. What did they have? Hand me that ox. walk, man. They, they still had ox. Oh, yeah. We just didn't call it the ox cord. Right. I think we did. We it just it wasn't, cord. like, trendy. Right. Yeah. You're hand, right. Me like, hand me that ox, you know. Um, Dope. Take your best shot. And number one is Eminem, the real Slim Shady. I love it. So, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Netflix original series, Dark, but they do something like this um, in the episode, except the music is not ongoing. It's like, don't ruin it for me. I want to watch it. I know. I I said, I don't want to go too much into it because I'll ruin oh, the okay. show, but I recommend it if you like Stranger Things. Hashtag not sponsored. Mic but the drop. show, Dark, is really, really good. I highly recommend it. Netflix, right? Yes. I'm going to have to listen. I kind of want to like put these... I mean, minus the Sesame Street Barney and the, no, me- you have, the Meow Mix. No, you on. have to put those on there. I guess you're right to get the whole authentic feel. 17 authentic feels of the CIA and music torture. How insane would it be if I did an experiment, made that playlist, had headphones in 24-7, and just like lived like that? Okay, um, I'm going to be really nice. Don't do that. Okay, thanks. I, th- I think you're going to go off the wall. Oh, already there. Check that box. That's what I'm saying. Colored in that bubble. <laughs> Color it in with your number two pencil. What happened to number one pencil? Nothing happened. It was never existed. It just, um, like Earth, it just appeared. Just like that. Just like that. I love it. So that's how music tortured people. Do they still do that? Yeah, it's, it was only 2004. They're still doing that. Places like the U.S., Guant- Guantanamo. Guantanamo Bay. I th- Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Crazy. But I feel like the U.S. is literally like the fucking capital for all that weird shit. Probably. I have no facts to back that up, but I'm going to nod and say probably. So um, I'm going to go next. I guess I'm up next. So this. Who next up? Sorry. This is the wooden horse, the wooden mule, or the Spanish donkey. They're all the same thing. I like the Spanish donkey better. Me too. And that's kind of what it's more... um, well known as okay so let me paint a picture for you essentially it is a wooden structure kind of like a statue in the shape of a horse or a donkey where um the spine of the horse like where you would get on like the saddle the spine of it is like a triangle it's like a log it's like a cylindrical triangle so you're sitting 
on, on the, the top of it. Yeah. Nice. And the legs of the horse sometimes went as tall as 15 feet if they did this like publicly. So your feet, when you're being forced to sit on this thing, your feet are high off the ground. They're dangling. Um, and because of the triangular shape of it, if you try to like throw your body one way or the other, your, your, uh, your legs don't really let you fall. Because they tie you up. The people who are torturing will tie you up. Um, and instead of a saddle, it's a bed of nails. Wait, so you're sitting on this, so it's either going into your vagina or into your asshole? I'm. Yeah. So that's like a real thing? Yeah. Oh my God. The Spanish donkey was invented by the Spanish Inquisition in the medieval times to punish those guilty of heresy, witchcraft, or the involvement of a crime. So if you weren't orthodox or you committed a terrible crime, you were finna be doomed. Yeah, with the triangle up your asshole. Right off the back. Since the invention of this device, it has been modified and mutilated, acquiring new and more sophisticated parts in both technicality and aesthetic ways. But the essence remained the same which was mainly the sharp corner of the triangle shape, which serves as the original seat upon which, upon which the torture takes place. So the construction is made up of metal or wood, sometimes both, and a naked victim is tied up and fixed onto the horse so that their feet cannot touch the ground. Uh, to enhance pain at this stage, torturers can pull the ankles in different directions and tie on additional weights. Oh, so that's so like even to your further ankles. Further down on the triangle. Yeah, so it's just pulling you down. Um, and if that was not enough to make one repent their sins, the victims' souls on their feet were splashed with hot ashes or tickled with fire, and their genitals rubbed until bloodied. The torturing was accompanied by the rupturing of the perineum, or pretty much the taint, um, which is the space between your testicles and your anus. This was mostly used on men, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, uh. Which acquired copious blood loss and ending with the painful apex as the sacrum breaks. And the sacrum is the triangular bone in the lower back which um, is formed from fused vertebrae and is situated between the two hip bones of the pelvis. So this means that if people survived this, the victim would usually be unable to walk without pain for the rest of their lives if they could even walk, if they even survived. According to historical sources, the wedge occasionally sliced entirely through the victim as a result of too much weight being attached to their ankles. So it just ripped them apart. Yeah. Oh. All the way up to like your neck and then it would just, your neck would, you know, flop off. Yeah. Uh, Duck and Aspen, the turtles are really celebrating the new year. Do you hear them over there? <gasps> Happy new year. Settle down, kids. <laughs> it was mostly used for men, as I said before. But there is information about the trial of one woman named Madeline Lazarus held in uh, Bor Boromo, Boromeo. Bormio, Italy. <laughs> in, yes. In 1673 for four months. She was subjected to various forms of punishment, but did not own up to her guilt. In the end, the city council decided to sentence her to 15 hours of torture by goats. Here's a little bonus torture. Goats. goats. Torture by goats. So the torture would take the intended victim and soak their feet in salt water or sugar water to get a goat to lick the feet. So essentially the joy of tickling that it begins with turns into pain from the constant licking of a coarse tongue. Think about it, like yeah, exfoliating your skin yeah. for 15 hours. Um, but instead of calling off the goat at this point, it is encouraged to continue licking the victim's feet and the pain only grows in intensity as the feet begin to blister and become raw. Eventually, the flesh of the victim begins to wear away and become raw and completely bloodied just from the tongue of a goat. Just a little side story for you to tell your ugly friends. Uh, so she endured all but three hours of that torture. Then she was sentenced to be beheaded and subsequently was burned at the stake. Her ashes were scattered in the winds. So all that stuff I told you when she was taken to like the goats and everything, that was after 
she already rode the Spanish donkey. And here's a graphic account of what happens. Are you ready? Because this is kind of brutal. If you're eating, maybe put the spork down. She curses aloud as the rough executioner split her legs apart, tie her hands to the head of the horse, and seat her on the wooden beam. Biting her lips in pain, the condemned woman tries to lean left and right in order to fall to the floor. However, the upward-facing triangular angle limits her maneuvers. Her legs dangle in the air, and the very place they converge becomes a source of humiliating pain. All she can do is cry and powerlessly knead the air and inner surfaces with her legs from which hot blood drips. For some time, the woman lays immersed in a monotonous, painful trance, unconsciously calling out for the aid of her soothing, childbearing instinct. However, when her torturers attach stone gears to her legs, the Spanish horse transforms into a giant knife, cutting the body in two with a truly fiendish deceleration. The adulteress, minute by minute, senses everything as she is extended along a natural anatomical indent. Uh, blood splashes on the floor in thin trickles. Suddenly, something snaps inside her. She descends into madness and with the inhuman zeal begins to bounce on top of the horse so she can speed up her own demise. There's another internal snap, though all the onlookers present in the chamber have already heard it. This was the sound of her sacral bone breaking. So the History Channel did a documentary called 80 Acres of Hell, which I have yet to watch. And they described the torture device, the mule, um, on which Confederate prisoners were forced to ride until they passed out. Many were crippled for life. The divorce was... The divorce... The device was also used by Union officers on freed men and women after the Civil War. I'm not okay. And an interesting fact is during the Edo period in Japan, this torture was used uh, in the struggle to spread Christianity and force people to renounce their faith. Psych, no. I'm not getting split open for this. And that is the Spanish donkey. What do you think? I'm, I can't speak. I know. I'm hurting. So I like, there's some pictures out there of, Don't. of like dummies placed on top of it. And it's like, horrifying. This was honestly, I forget when I came across this, but it was a couple years ago. And when I thought that we should do an episode like this, that was kind of what I had in mind. Think about that. You're like, I, it's I'm, going so slow. I'm sorry. Are you about to? <laughs> she needs a minute. Like, she started bouncing up and down Stop. just to speed it I'm up. I'm going to throw up. Okay. I I really need a minute. Okay. And that about does it for this episode. Thank you guys for listening. You can email us at oddityspodcast at gmail.com. All right. Next story. We have eight in total, correct? So we're down two. We got six more to go, right? I believe in you. I'm literally gagging over here. I can't stop picturing it in my head. Oh, I have pictures if you want to see. Okay. March 24th. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Can you give us the title or are you just going to ease into it? Nope, just going to ease into okay. it because I'm telling a story. March 24th, 2017, the United Nations human rights body agreed to investigate more of the abuse happening inside of North Korea. This investigation will be used in a further accountability process if the country's leader, if the country's leaders are ever held accountable. I know it doesn't make sense, but just wait. About 200,000 people are currently imprisoned in these camps in North Korea. While about 400,000 people have died in them, according to reports from Amnesty International and the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea, North Korea has repeatedly denied such reports, and it boycotted the UN debate since. But there have been countless testimonies of escapees who have been spoken out about the abuse in these camps. Leading all of this is Kim Jong, who also denies any rumors. What is this, you ask? What is this? It's um, North, Korea's, North Korean prison camps. Over time, North Korea has established a system of prison camps. These camps include methods such as digging your own grave, starvation, and hard labor. I believe you will be very disturbed and distressed by it and that you will have a reaction like those of the U.S., said General Eisenhower and others who came upon these camps in post-war Europe. 
In a country of 25 million, up to 200,000 have reportedly disappeared into brutal concentration camps and found throughout the country. Former prisoners say the conditions are so bad that 20 to 25 percent die every year. North Korea uses guilt by association to lock up entire families just for knowing someone convicted of wrong thought. Shin Dong Hayuk was born inside one camp and lived there for 23 years before he could escape. Few have ever escaped because anyone who tries, plans, or has knowledge of an escape is executed, and all prisoners are required to watch. Not to make this, like, I'm not making light and I'm not making funny of this situation, but as you're reading this to me, I'm turning around and this turtle is trying to escape out of this tank. If you guys hear that, I'm trying my best to have him keep it down, but that is Aspen for you. He's a... He's a rowdy one. He's a rowdy one. Starvation is a common torture method in cam- in the camp. Prisoners are usually fed cornmeal and cabbage. We were always hungry and the guards always told us, through hunger you will repent, Shin said. They often ate rats and insects just to stay alive. Without protein and calcium in their diet, prisoners have developed hunchbacks from bending over in fields or loose toes and fingers to frostbite. Guards treat prisoners as subhuman, terrorizing and torturing their captives, sometimes just for fun, according to escapees. The tip of one of Shin's fingers were chopped off as punishment for accidentally breaking a machine while working in a factory. When he was 13, Shin was sent to an underground torture center after his mother and older brother were accused of attempting to escape. They hung me by my ankles and they tortured me with fire, he said. Pregnancy is strictly forbidden, except in the case of a marriage arranged by the prison guards. One person testified that she witnessed a female prisoner forced to drown her baby in a bucket. Yo. Uh Uh-huh. Prisoners are uh, categorized as their conditions deteriorate. If prisoners make it past guards and electrified fences, they still need to get across the border to China. If discovered, they face the possibility of getting sent back. Um, Camps aren't limited to North Korean borders. The regime also exports slave labor to Serbia, according to a vice report. Workers can be sent to Serbia for 5 to 10 years to do their duty for their home country. While North Korea denies the camps exist, satellite imagery shows what looks like prisoner camps scattered across the country. And that is North Korean prison camps. You guys are more than welcome to search the topic. Please do because it's really, really important. That's crazy. When did that start, did you say? Allegedly, the U.S. started doing research on the North Korean prison camps in uh, 2017. Yipes. So basically, I think what they're doing is they're trying to gather information just in case if a U.S. citizen, like, gets put into there, that they can protect them, allegedly. Oh, okay. That's what I'm assuming the, um, the like, research is for. Hmm. Because well, they're, um, they're, like, looking into it. Well, let's hope that's all that is. Right. Hmm. So, uh, more torture methods. Are you ready for this? No. This is the Iron Maiden. Do you know what that is? A band. That's what my brother said. Like, I know it's a band, but I thought everybody knew what an Iron Maiden was. Do you know what an actual Iron Maiden is? No. So, you remember Matilda, right? Yeah. Do you remember Miss um, Mrs. Trunchbull? She had the chokey. The chokey, yes. That is essentially what an Iron Maiden. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um... It's pretty much kind of in the shape of like a coffin, like a stand up. Oh, with or nails like, in it. Yeah. Or like a sarcophagus or like, um, yeah, what the Egyptians used to use. Essentially, that's what it looks like um, for their dead, the mummies that stand up. Oh, yeah. But on the inside of it, there's nails. Nails. Yeah. Nice, big, iron, pointy ass nails. In the nail. chokey. <laughs> in the chokey. Um, so the Iron Maiden was a presumed torture and execution device uniquely. Uh, it was invented in Germany and it consisted of an iron cabinet with a hinged front and spike covered interior. This makes it sound so goddamn HGTV. Like I just described it as like a sarcophagus with spikes in it. And here they're like, oh my God. And if you look at this Germanic invention, it consists of an iron cabinet with hinged front and spike covered interior. Oh, and you're really going to love that. <laughs> you're really going to love this one. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so, and it was tall enough for a human being to fit into. And the device was so torturous that initially it was considered to be a fictional device and uh, they did not think it actually existed. Psych, it does. Psych, it does. Psych your moms. There's various documented proofs of the device which were subsequently found. uh, And thus it was confirmed that the device was actually in use, although perhaps not during medieval times, which for a long time people um, associated the Iron Maiden with the medieval times. I'm so sorry. As there is hardly any concrete evidence that this uh, was used during that era. So while it is disputed that when the device was used, um, it's generally agreed upon that some variation of the device was used at some point in history, since there's a bunch of different little blueprints for certain different devices. They're not really sure exactly when it was used but the first recorded description of the iron maiden was from johann philip sebeckenese why can't it just be smith god damn it a german philosopher and archaeologist in 1793 so according to him it was first used august 14th 1515 this is according to his writing and he wrote about a coin forger who uh suffered a terrible fate Being enclosed in the casket full of spikes, they slowly impaled him. Um, But as it turned out, that guy made up the story of the Iron Maiden. And according to historians, uh, he created this history as an actual mock-up of a real device that was implemented of torture of witches and others who opposed of Christianity in the church in uh, in 1793, not 1973. So glad to see history repeating itself. People literally taking old things and just making it their own. So the mechanism of operation of the Iron Maiden is quite simple. So once inside, the door's are shut on the victim and the spikes would pretty much pierce them uh essentially it would it would pierce through the skin and into several different organs inside the body these spikes were supposedly short and positioned so that the victim would not die quickly this meant that they would most likely uh result in small wounds and the victim would bleed out over the course of several hours which would then lead to their death and they're already in a casket there you go, dude. Save that money. Just bury that thing. Then you got to make another one and just, <laughs> you know, the economy wonder, is not great. I wonder how they made the nails. Like, because it would be flipped. The The flat part would be on the thing. So how did they make them stay? They could probably, I don't know, crazy glue? Yeah, sure. Hot glue? Deaf. I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll ask this guy. I'll text ask him. him. I'll fax him. Ask Mr. Smith. You got it. Um, and oh, also to add to the horror of it all, two spikes were positioned specifically to penetrate the eyes. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. What? Like the balls. Well, like sure. The they, I mean, nothing was really going uncovered. That's true. Think about it. They just specifically got those two. <laughs> imagine, imagine them just not putting one there. That would kind of be nice. <laughs> that would be, that would um, be nice. So several 19th century Iron Maidens are on display in museums around the world. And probably the most famous that popularized the design is the Iron Maiden of Nuremberg, which was built in the early 1800s and destroyed in an Allied bombing in 1944. Um, and I also saw in some places they would have a hole cut out for the face and they said that they would use it for like questioning of people. So since the spikes were so small, like certain people wouldn't intentionally be put there to like die, but they would like question you and interrogate you. And like, if you weren't answering their questions, they would poke you in the eyes with the pokers. They'd be like, all right, we're going to let you out as long as like, you got to tell pokey. us it, in the chokey, the pokey. I got what you said oh. there. But that was like terrifying as a child watching Matilda. Oh my God, same. I was really sure that like one of my teachers would do that to me. Like any class that I saw, I'm like, mm, it's chokey. It's the chokey. <laughs> Gotta be nice. But the salamander in the water. Um, Lavender is my favorite. Sorry. Real quick fun fact is according to some sources, the construction of the Iron Maiden was inspired from a medieval device called the Shammed Mantle, uh, which literally meant the coat of shame or the barrel of shame made of wood and metal, but without the spikes. So it was literally just you get put in like a fucking barrel with your head sticking out of it. Shut the fuck up. The barrel Stop. of shame. To the barrel of shame with ye. And then <laughs> and then all you see is 
<laughs> just I a think head. I've seen a picture of that before. It's just like just a head. And the man's like balding and he's just in there. Just just one man, the only victim life. that's ever Yep, just that mm, one person. Just that one man. Shut up. So uh so that was the Iron Maiden, also known as the Chokey or the Barrel of Shame. Barrel roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So what you got for me next? All right. This is my favorite one. All right. I'm all warmed up. Give right, it to me. Ready? This is called The White Room. Okay. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, No, I don't think so. I'm hype. Okay. Uh, this torture method is said to be one of the most mentally damaging. White room torture is a cell or a box, which is nothing but white walls. The shoe box. Yep. Okay. The sheets, prison clothes, doors, lights, and everything else in the cell are white. Also, the food served is white rice. Sensory deprivation is not only inflicted through the color, but also absolute silence. Although white room torture does not involve beating or pain, this type of torture puts fear in the prisoner. This fear causes the prisoner to lose identity, and they will ultimately forget friends slash family over time. That's crazy. There is also a conditioning fear attached to the color white. White room torture was originally used in Iran by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard in a convert detention center. The prisoners were individuals such as journalists who questioned the Iranian objective through speeches and writings. That's not us, by the way. We're not doing that at all. Don't. Come and get us. And whatever you do, don't email us at oddityspodcast at gmail.com. Why would you say it? We've already said it four fucking times. Oh my God. Did you just put it's, the white rice on the plate. It's in our Wikipedia. Like, if people want to contact us, you got it. I'm going to call him Amir F because I don't want to butcher his name. Okay. I want to put respect on it. Okay. Amir F was one of the first prisoners and explained his experience as deafening and inhumane. His case was documented by Amnesty International in 2004, the year he was tortured. He was tortured for eight months and still has night terrors about his time in the white room. That's insane because it's it like seems so innocent and it doesn't seem like torture. Yeah. But then you're there for like thinking about it eight, eight months, months with nothing. nothing. So um, it's also said that they put um, like padding on the um like the doors and stuff so like when you slid food in you don't hear it you don't hear anything no you don't hear not one thing like that soundproof room and the color it's like they're basically explaining that the color white like attacks people that's scary like i guess the i guess the human mind like just well it's also like bland like there's no there's, there's nothing, nothing there. And just imagine like a world without color. I feel like we as humans, sorry, I'm going to get back to the story, but I feel like we as humans are so used to seeing color that we take advantage. And when, when someone's put in a room take like Take it for this, granted, you mean. Yeah, that's what I meant. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so I feel like when you're put in a room like this, it's like your mind goes overboard. Crazy. I was there for eight months. And after those months, I couldn't remember my father and my mother's face. Amir F. stated, when they released me from that prison, I was not a normal person. This torture has also been tried in countries like the U.S., Ireland, and Venezuela. The psychological misery sticks even after being released. The suffering goes on endlessly, and the person never restores back to normal. Psychiatric sessions may help to an extent, but complete mental recovery is a distant dream for such prisoners. Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. That's insane. I told you about this the last episode, but I'm telling you, White Christmas, that Black Mirror episode, yes. was pretty much like very similar to that. It's it's so crazy because I think for some reason, I want to say like any color would be torture, but white is just like, yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. And then it's like white food. And um, have you heard about the silent room? I forget where the hell it is. They had it. No, it's like an actual thing but they did an art installation i want to say it was in baltimore or boston but i could be totally wrong um okay so it's called the quietest place on earth that will drive you insane within 45 minutes now it's not all white but it is like so silent that it's deafening that's um, what they say about this room also like even if the if it's not the color it's the silence yeah they have like even the floors like a little grate that has these uh the foam things that that absorb the sounds. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and it's in Minnesota, and it blocks out 
uh, percent of external sound. So pretty much you hear your own heart beating and you can just hear everything happening within your body. But that's like like it. And like people go in there by themselves. And this is an art installation? I know that they did it as an as an art installation. That's so yes. crazy. Yeah. Um, I've been in some rooms for post-production where they're doing like Foley sound, which is like the sound effects that they use in movies and stuff. Um, and it's quiet. It's right. like scary quiet. Yeah. Like even the studio that I work at, I mean, it's not dead ass quiet, but it's quiet enough. at night, like, you, yeah, the walls are all like sound absorbing the floor, the ceiling is quiet. I don't like that. Yeah. I really don't know what I'd do without like color or music or like people. I just, I, I wouldn't even last eight months. Mm-mm. Would well, you last. would have to, because what else are you going to do? Run into the wall. That's true. Yeah. I bet they padded the walls too. That's what's absorbing all the sound. Exactly. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, like you said. Cry, cry. Well, something even more frightening or equally frightening is the brazen bull or the Sicilian bull. Have you ever heard of this? No, but why do you like animals that torture people? Oh, that's a really good question. I didn't even notice that. And speaking of which, you know those animals where they tie a person like to four different horses and have them run in different yes, directions? and they, um, and then they, what is it? They, they just sweep, snap. snap in half. Yeah, I didn't do that, but I just wanted to bring that up just to remind everybody. That you like animals that torture people. Love them. So the brazen bull... Um, but none of these are real animals. That but the true. animal behind me is. Hold on. I have to go <laughs> yell at Help this turtle him. again. All right. He's going to fall down again. That's fine. I am I could edit that out, but I'm not going to edit that out because this is the real me. This is my life. I'm going to share something really personal in a second. Okay. After Why don't you're you done. Go ahead before I start. This is really personal. This is probably the most personal thing I've shared on this podcast. So I was walking to the grocery store yesterday. I had my big ass bottle of wine and I run into this boy. He literally, well, he runs into me, like literally runs into me and almost knocks the wine out of my hand. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I look up and I'm like, oh, wow, you're really cute. Like, I don't really have issues, you know whatever but anyway so my friend i was telling my friend about him she's like don't do it he's a stage five cleaner this man i have not answered him all day he's texting me five times yipes he is a stage five cleaner y'all don't give your number out to strangers ever oh no girl i could have told you that how how do you meet people how do you meet new people if you don't give your number out you don't just give your number out to the boy who almost ran into you and fucked up your wine night you right Mm -hmm. anyway if you want to edit that out you can if not I think I believe that in there. Remember that one time we were walking to the subway and you fell down the stairs I've, with the cute boy? Yes, I saw the cute boy and I was like, yes, I'm going to strut down these stairs. Nope. She fell down the stairs, which brings us to the brazen bull. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the brazen bull torture device was a Greek device used to torture criminals till death. So pretty much this wasn't to get people talking. This was essentially like Literally you're going like to be torture. put to death, but we're going to do it the hard way. It was considered to be one of the most gruesome methods of executing criminals during the medieval period. In order to discourage people from committing other crimes, they would take the criminals and be like, hey, if y'all don't stay in line, this is what's going to happen to you. So they would take them and they would shove them. Okay, hold on, wait. All because they didn't stay in line? Well, criminals. Oh, stay in line, like. Like abide pe- by the law. Yeah. I thought you'd. I literally pictured an actual line of people, like yeah. single file. If you're not, you're gonna get this fucking bull. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so let me um let me paint the picture for you. So it's like basically a giant statue of a bull. It's made completely out of bronze, and it looks exactly like a bull from the outside. But the inside, oh honey, the inside is hollow like me, baby. So it has a little door on the side. And you can climb on in there or be pushed in there. I was going to say, you can. No one's voluntarily climbing into this Mm -hmm. bronze-ass bull. Um, And then the door closes and it locks from the outside. And then... um, Do you want to guess what happens from there? Do you suffocate to death? No, there's holes in the the nose of the bull, which is through the neck. But do you want to guess what happens? Is it like operated by you? By the person in there? No. Okay, tell me. Um, they have a little bonfire under it, underneath the belly. Yo! So you're sitting inside this bronze bowl. Bronze gets so hot. It turns oh. yellow. And then, um, 
the nose, the the holes that are in the nostrils oh, of the bull, blows smoke. it blows out smoke and they made it so it whistles like a teapot and it echoes your screams to make it sound even more horrifying. So they were really putting on a show like, you guys, if you are trying to steal from Limited 2, if you're trying, you're to, take that, trying to take that apple from the Mini Mart, mm-mm. Try it again at Best Buy, I bet. <laughs> so the brazen bull was invented by Perellos of Athens in 6th century BC. He suggested to Phalaris, which was the tyrant at the time, uh, to use the brazen bull torture device as a new method of executing criminals. It is also believed that Phalaris got so disgusted by the description of the working of the bull presented by Perellos that he ordered him himself to enter the brazen bull and showed him how the screams would actually sound. Once Perellos entered the brazen bull, orders were passed to lock its door and light a fire under it. So this is the man who like Let wanted- Let a fire under your ass. Yeah, for real. <laughs> So he screamed and suffered inside the bull. uh, And just when he was about to die, he was taken out. Personally, I think it's according to legend. But, you know, it was the 6th century BC. Allegedly. Allegedly. So he thought that Phalaris would reward him for his invention. Bye, He was like, you almost killed me, but it did good, right, sir? Uh, Instead, he threw him from the hill and he was eventually killed. Amazing. So the history of the brazen bull torture device was repeated when Phalaris was overthrown and he saw his own fate sealed as he himself became a victim of the brazen bull torture device. So the brazen bull, like I said before, worked in this manner. Criminals were ordered to enter the bull. Then the door was locked. After that, a fire was lit under the bull's belly and it was heated to a point that the brazen bull would turn red hot and the criminals inside essentially roasted to death. Were they ashes? Because if this bronze thing is turning red, those people... They roast in, they toast in. It's a sauna in there. Oh my God. Yeah. So the head of the brazen bull had uh, specialized tubes that converted the screams of the tortured criminals into a bell- into a bellowing sound of an infuriated bull. The torture device was completely made from bronze and was hollow in the inside, again, like myself. It was the same size and shape of an actual large bull, and the door on one side was large enough for a man to enter in. And the types of crimes punishable with the bull were... They were criminals who had carried out serious crimes such as treason. Uh, And basically, like I said before, the criminals were subject to punishment to discourage other people in the population from committing more crimes. The brazen bull was also used in order to punish people on the basis of religious differences. Hmm, history repeating itself? I think so. It is historically (laughs) believed that many Jews and Christians were executed by the brazen bull. And then a little fun fact that I read is once the people died, they would like the it would literally be ashes and bones inside. So they would scoop out the bones. That's what I'm saying. Like these people had to be dust. Mm -hmm. They would scoop out the bones and they would uh, fancy them into necklaces and keychains and fun little things and sell them on the market. So you could uh, you could get a cool little bone. Yeah. Bone marrow. I would get it on the keychain. I get it on a necklace. I'm kidding. Isn't that what I'm? I'm kidding. I had a bone necklace. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. I had a bone necklace and I have a tooth necklace. Didn't the Flintstones have a bone necklace? Yeah. Well, they had, he had like the saber tooth too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Bam, um, not Bam Bam. Um, yeah, she had that bone the in her hell hair. is her name? I know it's not Lauren. Flintstone. The hell is the daughter's name? I don't remember. Phoebe. BB. Yes. Okay. CC. I know it's a proud family. Oh my God, what is her name? Betsy Ross. Fuck, what's her Pebbles. name? Pebbles. Oh my God. Why I didn't I think it, of that? I said it like I was annoyed that you didn't get it. I didn't know <laughs> it until right now. Yes, Pebbles. Uh, she, had the, she had the bone in her hair. What if she got it from a brazen bull? She probably didn't. But she uh, could have. Maybe. I don't think it was that time though. No, I don't think so either. You never know. So yeah, that was a brazen bull. What do you think? It's not as bad as the first one. <laughs> I really can't. All right. So uh, this next one is um, we're taking it back a little bit um, to medieval times. Re, 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 rewind. These are whips, flails, and cats o' nine tails. That wasn't supposed to rhyme, but it did. Do you know what cat o' nine tails are? 
No. All right. So you know in BDSM where they take the whip and it's like um, it looks like a like spider legs, like it has all. It's like a rope, but it's um the tassels. Yes. Yes. It's that's what cat o nine tails are. Oh, I, oh, I have a couple. Exactly. So, um, flogging is the act of beating or whipping the human body. Flogging comes from the Latin word whip. It is usually done on the un, on an unwilling subject as punishment, but also sometimes used in religion and BDSM. As in many forms of torture practice, flogging was the was a way to expose women's naked or semi-naked bodies. Inquisitors and witch finders were known for finding reasons for exposing female bodies. Naturally. Right. In some circumstances, the word flogging is used to include any sort of corporal punishment, including birching and canning. However, in British legal terminology, a distinction was drawn, um, and is still and still is in some ex ex colonial territories between flogging with cat o nine tails and whipping, formerly with a whip, but since the early nineteenth century with a birch. So basically, it's called different things. Ah. Um, Depending where you are. Okay. Um, like a hot dog. Basically, in Britain, these were both abolished in 1948. Oh, wow. It was common to be flogged at whipping posts and then taken to a pillory, um, which was the wooden frames with the holes and the head in the hands. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in which an offender was imprisoned and exposed to public ab- abuse. Flogging consisted of... Offender's upper half being exposed while suspended by the wrist from a post or beneath a tripod of wooden beams. The offender's feet normally did not touch or barely touch the ground. This helped to stretch the skin on the back and centered the offender's weight in the shoulders, Ooh. which served to increase the pain of whipping. Ooh. People thought way too much into this shit. God damn. They really did. Like, it's not good. But they do it in BDSM, too. Right, but that's because it's, like, hot. But this was, like, all right, let's do this publicly oh, no, because saying, this like, person stole from the fucking Limited, too. Yeah, like, they, like, thought that that was a good way to punish people, which yeah. is bizarre to me. With the prisoner stripped and bound, either one or two floggers administrated the number of strokes or lashes to the victim's back. If the offender had fainted from blood loss or suffered extreme skin and flesh loss from the back, the punishment was usually... St- suspended until the offender had been restored to consciousness usually this was done by a bucket of water to the face oh god so even if you pass out from the pain they're like wake up Mm. once the prisoner was conscious the remainder of the required lashes were administrated punishment was usually limited limited to 20 50 or 100 lashes at once although records exist in of prisoners in the 19th century receiving more than 3,000 lashes over a number of months or years following the whipping the prisoners lacerated back was normally rinsed with brine while this caused additional pain the brine was intended to serve as an antiseptic i was gonna say that like probably is good for it but not that when i feel like a straight up infection right this kind of torture was very popular in medieval and early modern European courts. Torture was deemed a legit means to extract confessions or to obtain the names of accomplices or other information about a crime. In theory, it was permitted only if there was already half proof against the accused. Defendants already sentenced to death would be tortured to force them to disclose the name of accomplices. And that is the um, history of Cat O Nine Tales and flogging. Oh, oh my god, that is awful. Yeah. I can't imagine. Also, this really opened my eyes to a lot of things, this um, topic. That's pretty fucked up. Like, I really kind of hate the world we live in, but I'm glad that it's not that. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, we are pretty terrible still in different ways, but shit. Oh, keep the flogging to yourself, mother flogger. And do you know the band Flog New Molly's? Yeah. That's literally what it's from. Oh. Yes. I never knew that until I did this research. I didn't know that either. I didn't even put that. I didn't even think about that. Me neither. Until right now. Wow. Was that your last one? Yep. All right. This is uh, my last one. So coming to a conclusion with the Chinese bamboo torture baby. Oh, my God. 
I feel like bamboo wouldn't this? even be that bad. Oh, <laughs> contraire. Oh, contraire. Mon cher. I really thought I brought my drink down here, but I guess I didn't. Am I drinking? Your- no, this is mine. No. So, essentially what happens is you lay down on a hammock or a cloth-like fabric, uh, which is placed over short, sharpened bamboo that is still in the ground. Now, one thing about bamboo is that it grows insanely fast and it spreads extremely fast you know it's really hard to it's really hard to control and essentially it's like a form of cancer of the ground i know that now i'm pretty sure it's like illegal to plant bamboo oh really yeah like it's cancer to the ground because it'll just kill everything well it does no i don't know if it'll kill everything but i know that it spreads and it's really like impossible to control and it spreads so goddamn fast like my uncle's beach house yeah. uh next door well caddy corner to where their house is now is the neighbors have like bamboo growing in their yard they've had it since the 70s and it's now kind of making its way into the oh, the yard next no. door which is the yard that they purchased um and i don't spreading like wildfire. yeah but i don't know how that's gonna affect an in-ground pool when they put that in i feel like it would deteriorate it it would probably push up through it and crack it yeah so you get it i hope well can you call your uncle and let him know on the phone he knows oh but does he know like the severity of the bamboo yeah okay i just he's got it under control okay great um so over several so okay picture this you're you're laying down on pretty much like a hammock imagine you're on a hammock and below you on the hammock you're strapped down to this hammock by the way you know you're about to be tortured and below you is bamboo oh and it grows up and it grows oh my god and it grows fast so over several days the sharp fast growing shoot which is what one pole of Uh, bamboo is called so the uh, fast growing shoot would first puncture then completely penetrate the victim's body eventually emerging through the other side the chinese poet and author Wun ping chin tells about these tortures in his memoir haka soul so the cast of the tv program mythbusters which i'm sure you've heard of and or watched uh, so they investigated this bamboo torture in a 2008 episode and found that bamboo can in fact penetrate through several inches of ballistic gelatin which is what they use to it's like a man-made gelatin that is pretty much human muscle tissue oh great Mm -hmm. um and it penetrated it within three days so this form of torture was recorded in the 19th century when malays alleged that the siamese used the sprout of napa palm in the manner of bamboo torture during 1821 the siamese invasion of kedah among other punishments. And also, it is alleged that after World War II, stories began circulating that uh, Japanese soldiers were inflicting bamboo torture upon U.S. and allied prisoners of war. So that's like as recent as World War II, that they are saying, allegedly, that people were placed on a hammock and had bamboo so they really grow were, them. Basically. It's alleged, so I don't know that they have any proof, but everywhere I looked online, it said that it, there are stories circulating about that. And it is slow and painful three days. They can pretty much just like leave you there. Three days. That a bamboo stick. I mean, that's fast just for a literally. plant to grow. But th- yeah, it like reminds me, all this stuff kind of reminds me of Saw. Yeah, basically. Um, Saw is like the biggest torture movie in the world i know but imagine torturing people like that like that's like riddles and no yeah but um now i think we should play a fun game called which would you pick okay go so which would you pick out of between yours and mine i have to think about this can you name yours again just to refresh my memory yeah so it is the uh the music the uh North Korean prison, uh, White Room, or the uh, Cat O Nine Tales. You know what? Let's split this up because your victims mostly didn't die; they were just kind of tortured, and pretty much almost all of mine were death. I didn't so notice let's, that until right now. Yeah, let's do yours, and then we'll pick from mine. So for yours, I would say the one I would go with is probably the music. Me too. For yours, I'm going with the bamboo. You're going with the bamboo. I don't. All yours are slow and painful. The chokey is the slowest. 
Um, I'm not getting ripped apart by my vagina up. I'm just not doing that. It, to me, I feel like that one would be the fastest. I'm not I mean, getting split open by my, by my vagina. I guess it does depend. It does depend on like how much weight and how slow they want to make I'm it. I'm never doing the bull thing. Like, yeah, no. I'm not trying to be a roasted Brussels sprout on this bitch. I'm, I'm doing the bamboo. Because I'm not. I feel like the bamboo. Dude, that can go through like your lung. Oh, so, okay. So can everything else that you mentioned. You either want to get burned to a crisp, poked in your eyeballs, uh, literally ripped apart by your asshole up, or do you want to get poked by some bamboo? I'm stuck between the Spanish donkey and the bamboo. Bye, boy. Uh, to me, I feel like it has the potential to be quick. Yet can't go anywhere and you have to bounce on it up and down in order to split yourself open. Yeah, but with the bamboo, you're laying there for three days and you, like, will die. Great. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That just got heated. Um, she. I'm doing the bamboo. Okay. If you want to split your up, split yourself up from the asshole up, be my guest. <laughs> because okay, listen, think of it this way. All right, let's say it's not so bad, and you know your the point is there, and it's like you know it's in your asshole, and then they slowly start putting more weight and more weight and more weight. Like either way, you're being tortured. So I'm gonna do the bamboo because people can't literally split me open from the ground up. You should have known that I was never picking that by the way I reacted when it happened. I know. I did start off pretty strong with that guy. <laughs> so your final answer, sir. <sighs> I don't know. Do you want to phone a friend? I would like to, yeah. All right, I'm your I'm gonna phone I'm gonna phone that turtle back there yeah, who seems won't like shut he's taking a goddamn plunge. Yeah, he's trying to get put in the bamboo. <laughs> uh, don't um panda bears eat bamboo they sure do that's what i okay so i would do the bamboo i would do my special panda call which i can't do right now because it's a secret and you would have them eat it and they would come over and they would eat all the bamboo and save my life i'm saying thank you for reminding me you're welcome and yeah do you have a fun fact i do have a fun fact um oh i actually think i may have done that one before i'll do mine uh, the 29th of May is officially put a pillow on your fridge day. We did that one. We did that one? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> we definitely did that one earlier, like in one of the early, early episodes. But thanks for reminding us. If you are constant, if you consistently fart for six years and nine months, enough gas is produced to create the energy of an atomic bomb. Did we do that one? No, but we just did, and that's amazing. Amazing. I feel like you'd love that one. I feel like I would need less than that time frame Probably to make it. Probably you fart a lot. Atomicbomb.com. Um, so the USA is one of only four countries where an artist does not get paid if a song they perform on AM, FM radio. The other three are China, Iran, and North Korea. That's fucked up. Pay your local artists. I don't think Taylor Swift needs my pennies. Fuck her. Oops. Oops. No, she's nice. I'm not taking Team Taylor. I'm not taking Team Kanye, Team Kim. I'm not doing it. I'm over it. I've moved on.org. It's 2018 right now. Everybody needs to get the fuck over it. I'm over it. I'm logging off right now. Hear that? Hear me? I'm logging away. Here I go. I wish you Here could I put go. that uh, AOL Bye, thing. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm logging off. I wish you could put that AOL thing, you know, like with the door slams or what is Jay it? Jay Carson like? has Ding. logged off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a door slam. It was like. Tar-tar. Yes. Yeah, I logged off. Um, well, shit, guys. I hope uh, you're having a great Monday. <laughs> I hope your 2018 is um, literally great, and I hope um, you enjoy this this yeah. year. Happy New Year, guys. We have a lot more fun, Coming up. organized, extremely I love how you put organized in yeah, there. Yeah, I had to do it. Um, guys, we know we're jumbled. Jumblies. But thank you guys for listening. Uh, And if you could, go ahead and give us a rating on whatever you are listening to us on. We greatly appreciate it. Follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Email us, oddityspodcast at gmail.com. Yes. And if you would like to support the show, we would greatly appreciate it. That's patreon.com slash esoteric oddities. 
We would greatly appreciate that, you guys. Thanks, y'all. Have a great new year. 2018 is going to be great. Make it your damn year. I'm saying, don't worry about all the shit that's going on. Make this about you and only you. Yeah, and if you have a New Year's resolution, I'm rooting for you. I myself don't make re- New Year's resolutions. I try to better myself, but email I feel us like... your um resolutions at Esoteric Oddities. No, that's not our email, baby girl. No, <laughs> cheese and rice. <laughs> Yeah, if you email us your uh, your resolutions, we're not going to get back to you. But uh, if you email them at oddiespodcast at gmail.com, gmail.com. Somebody I always just flip might. them. Yeah, you do. You flippity flop. You flip flop. But um, I just wanted to tell you guys to um, keep smiling, keep shining, Copyright. know that you can always count on me for sure. That's what friends are for. Hey, they're good times. And bad times. Okay, we gotta go before we get hit with a couple of Bye, strength. guys. Thank you guys again for listening. We love you. Have a great day. Rock on. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>